GM, good morning. Welcome to the Milk Road Show, the daily crypto show that's as smooth as the freshly paved road. I'm your host, Kyle Reedhead. Joining me today is crypto investor and educator and good friend of the show, Zeneca. And today we're going to talk about something probably none of you want to hear, but probably need to hear. And that's historically September is the worst month for Bitcoin and crypto. Imagine that after about six months of nothing but struggle in the markets. Uh, so we're going to chat about if September 2024 is going to be just as tough and as bad as previous years, or if we can expect something a little different this time around. Uh, before we get into it, though, let's um, take a quick second to hear from uh, our sponsors, Kelpdale. Get ready because your reward farming game is about to level up. Introducing Gain, powered by Kelp, your DGen concierge. Gain is an automated vault launched by Kelp that maximizes rewards for ETH users. It offers one-click access to airdrops and points from leading L2s like Linea, Scroll, Karak, and more. Here's how it works. Head over to milkroad.com forward slash Kelp Gain and spot airdrop gain. Get a complete overview of how your assets are deployed and the rewards and points you stand to gain. With just a few clicks, deposit ETH or SETH or liquid staking tokens into the smart vault. That's it. The best part, once you deposit your issued a liquid token, AG ETH, enabling you to participate in DeFi on Pendle, Spectra, Lira, Splice, and others. Gain is already live and you can go check it out for yourself today. Just head over to milkroad.com forward slash kelp gain and get started. By the way, stick around until the end of the episode because I'm going to announce the winners of our crypto giveaway. There's four prizes up for grabs. Make sure you stick around to the end so you can see if you win, if you subscribe to our YouTube or podcast channels over the last two weeks and or you shared that on Twitter. And there's a chance that you have won. Stick around to the end and I will share the names of who won. Let's get underway here and talk about the deadly, deadly September in Bitcoin. Uh, I guess it's also, I think, in, in the S&P 500 as well. It's mm -hmm. not just uh, it's not just Bitcoin. But let me just start sharing screen here and I'll just show for those that are watching. Uh, we've got a chart up here. This is why we're talking about this of Bitcoin seasonality. So it's kind of the average monthly performance of Bitcoin for I actually don't know how many years, but a, a number of years, let's call it. And the worst one of, of them all, of all the months of the year, September, it averages a negative 4.6% on the month. Uh, not so great. Zeneca, what do you think? Is this real this year or what do you think is going to happen this time around? Or what are we today? September 4th as we record. What are your thoughts in September? Yeah, I mean, like already it's been a bad month. Like <laughs> we saw everything drop off a lot last couple of days. Uh, yes, historically, September has been the worst month for Bitcoin. I'm always a little weary in uh, attributing too much on uh, like historical data when it comes to Bitcoin and crypto because we don't actually have that long, like 10, 15 right. years of, of this asset class existing, um, but also an asset class that has changed significantly year to year, and especially cycle to cycle. So just because it was bad 10 years ago uh, for a few years doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be bad today because it's a completely different environment. Um, however, it, it also does have a self-fulfilling prophecy element when everyone expects it to be bad, people are a little more cautious, people aren't buying the dips as much, people are waiting for it to end. Um, and so I, I do think that like, you know, all else being equal, it is probably more likely than not that we do have a bad September. Um, and by bad, I don't necessarily mean things are going to fall off a cliff. I think just more of the same choppiness. Like we might not see that explosive leg up, that bullish um, end of this choppiness that people are expecting. Uh, we, we have the rate cuts coming this month or mo most certainly coming this month. And I think that might have some sort of uh, a potential effect or relief, but also that we probably won't see those for another month or two afterwards. And so... Yeah, look, I, I'm always weary in um, relying too much on historical data, especially uh, when we don't have like that large of a significant st uh, sample size. But I, I am being a bit cautious, and, and, and I do think that more likely than not, we, we, we struggle this month. Well, if there's any good news here, and for those that can't see this chart, October and November <laughs> look very good. They're actually the oh, two. Yeah. Well, November is the best month of the year always. October is the third best. Looks like April is the second best. But October, 29.5% on average. And November, 37.9% on average. And really, every month after September looks really good all the way up until next August. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's maybe, great. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's what's going to happen. Let me just show some charts, and then we'll talk about some of the specifics. You talked about rate cuts and things. Um, but in terms of where we're at in the market right now, I think this is like a... 
uh, some really interesting charting that I saw, which right now I have the Coinbase chart up and basically just drew an ascending line from or a trend line from when we bottomed back in 2023 uh, all the way up to where we are today. And there's this trend line that we have been touching. We've touched it four times now since the bottom. And every time we touch it, coin absolutely rockets. What's interesting, and we're right on that line right now as we speak. So like, we'll see what happens. Obviously, markets are closed as we're recording. So I don't know what's going to happen. But you can look at Ethereum, same line. If you look at Ethereum when it bottomed out back in, I think it was June of 2022. Um, uh, same idea here. It comes up every time it touches it. It's, um, it's rocketed. Now, we touched it back in like August. And we're sort of coming back close to it, but haven't touched it yet. But again, we're on that sort of trend line. And then the big one in terms of at least the stock market is NVIDIA, which is the same line. So again, bottomed out in 2022. It's double tapped it multiple times in this like bull run that NVIDIA has been on. And every time it double taps, it skyrockets. And what have we just done? Or actually, we haven't done it, but we're close to another double tap. So part of me says, okay, if we double tap on all these and we, and we go back up, like this is our... our finally our chance to sort of lift off. But if we break below these, I'm actually getting a little bit scared in terms of where we're at. So what scares me a little bit is we're at the beginning of September. And so if we have a rough September, we might be breaking down below some pretty heavy support. Um, so I don't know. That's just one way to just kind of lay the ground a little bit for those that are that are watching. We're at some very, very important times for markets, I think, right now. Uh, and so we'll see where things go. But if we break down, I'm actually a little bit scared. I don't know if you've taken an eye on this at all, if you're thinking about anything to do with TA or looking yeah. at price action, but what does this what does this bring up for you? No, this is basically echoes exactly what I've been thinking as well. Um, I hadn't actually looked at the charts, but the, the charts just mirror uh, thoughts I've been having because uh, when we step away from crypto and, and look at things like um, Nvidia is a great example, um, and it's obviously been on an explosive run for for years, and, and especially the last twelve to, to eighteen months. Uh, it. it it can't go up this at this rate forever. It has to stop at some point. The music has to stop. And I think when that happens, it's it's such a large percentage of like, I think NVIDIA is like 6% of the whole S&P 500 alone, something like that, some crazy high percentage. I mean, tech stocks like the Magnificent Seven or whatever they're called are like 30 something percent. Yeah. Um, if we see a crash in them for whatever reason, that there's so many factors that could lead to that, um, we will see that flow into crypto. We will see that flow into everywhere. Like, like it or not, crypto is still correlated to equity markets and, and the rest of the world. Um, and, and perhaps even more so because it's it's such a risky asset and it's 24-7. When the stock market closes, you can't sell off your socks. When, when the, you, you, you need money, you need capital, you go sell your crypto. Um, so I, I'm really, uh, I think we're on like a knife's edge at the moment where if we do drop below this, if you know NVIDIA drops another 10%, another 10%, then I think we we see this like house of cards effect crumbling. Um, we might you know rebound quickly and bounce back within within a month or two after that, and and it could be happy days depending on um, you know fiscal policy and and if people feel like they're getting more capital back and and all all, all, sorts, of, all, sorts, of, all sorts of stuff like that. But it, it's certainly on my mind. It's risky, and uh, you know I, I'm sort of consolidating my portfolio accordingly, where I, I'm trying to get out of like too much of the riskiest assets um or if i'm like sort of buying something to trade i'm not planning to hold it for long i'm like in and out scalping not not you know holding something for three to six months because right. i think that it's really risky out there right and interesting so i just also pulled up the nasdaq same trend line the only <laughs> one that doesn't really fit on here although it has hit off the same trend line a bunch but it isn't even close to going back to is bitcoin Bitcoin yeah. actually looks really good in, in terms of this uh, in terms of this trend line. So Bitcoin could go down, I don't know, 10, 20, maybe even 30% and still not hit that trend line. So that's one thing that looks good here, I guess. But yeah. when we get close to these lines here where it's like, okay, if we go up, we're good. If we go down, break to below this, like potential back into the bear market zone, I like to step back and go, okay, what's happening in the market? Like, does it make sense for us to break be below this, go into a bear market zone? There's a lot of talk around recession. Um, but in my opinion, we've got rates coming up, liquidity is increasing. So like, I think things are pretty good. Recession doesn't look like it's going to happen, although it still could. What's your thoughts? You said rates are coming and so you're expecting them to cut. Is this a bullish cut or is this a bearish cut in your opinion right now? I think it's um, it's a necessary cut. I think it's um, uh, I think it's bullish in the sense that it will unlock liquidity. People will have a little more capital to put into risky assets um, and maybe take away from their, their saving accounts and bonds and things that are returning and yielding less. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I think the big question is uh, is it too little, too late? Like maybe we needed these cuts three, four, five months ago um, because we've seen so many flow on effects in the economy now, where there's a cost of living crisis. People are struggling. People don't feel rich or wealthy. 
is a 25 or 50 basis point cut really going to put that much extra money in people's pockets? Um, I think we need a series of continued cuts over the next 6, 12, 18 months. And I think we will get them. Um, but I think that also means that it's going to take a while for this to play out and for it to reflect in the charts. I don't think a, a 25 basis point cut comes and then all of a sudden we just rock it up from there. I think it, it's going to take a little while. And um, yeah, like this chart right here shows that it, it doesn't necessarily happen like that. It, it does take some time. Yeah. Great. I find rates matter, of course, as you said, especially if we're talking, are we in a recession, et cetera, like rates are going to help just ease the average consumer. Um, but is it what really moves markets? Like, I don't know that it does. Um, and looking at this chart, you can see that Technically, it did during COVID. Rates went down to zero, mm. and all of a sudden, we skyrocketed. But I think the other big thing is liquidity went absolutely nuts. I actually have the chart right here. At the same time, liquidity yeah. went nuts, and that's kind of what markets tend to fall is more liquidity than anything. But rates are kind of a sign that if we're lowering them, probably more liquidity is coming. Yeah. Because interestingly, if we go back to like 2016, 2017, 2018, that two cycles ago bull run, we were raising rates that entire cycle, um, which is quite interesting. Uh, and we yeah. kept raising, and we went to the bear market. So um, I don't know. I don't know how much rates really matters here. I kind of think we'll see rates. We'll definitely see rates cut. I don't know if it's going to be 25 or 50 in September. Um, but I don't know that like the moment they do that, all of a yeah. sudden that's going to move the market. I don't think so. We all know it's happening. We've been talking about it for months. Yeah. Uh, and there's been like two months between uh, between the two rate decisions. So like at this point, everyone is like, yeah, we're cutting. And so if it was going to do anything, it's probably already priced, priced in. in. I think the bigger thing maybe is probably the election coming yeah. up, which is in November. Um, what are your thoughts around that? Is that going to be a big deal for the market or is it more just liquidity? It's going to be a huge deal, I think, for... Um, I mean, crypto has become an election issue this time around. It's basically a partisan issue, which is not necessarily a great thing. But we've seen Trump obviously come out very pro-crypto. At least he's saying he's pro-crypto. Who knows what he's actually thinking or doing or planning to do. You, you can't really trust that much currently trust any politician um and i think if trump does get elected and wins and uh, it'll probably give a little bit of a boost to crypto it, it seems like the crypto community expects that to be good long term for crypto regulation for fiscal policy all that kind of stuff if uh kamala wins then they they have like indicated that they will be more pro crypto than say previous administrations which is a good thing but i think it will be not nearly as good as if trump wins and so like it's definitely a big thing to be watching um my concern is that trump wins and we get a little bit of a pump kamala wins and we get a big crash and so i don't know that the risk reward is there and maybe you want to de-risk going into the election um obviously you want to keep an eye on polls like right now it's bang on 50 50 if that changes in the lead up to to the election then um, you might want to be uh changing your portfolio accordingly because uh, a trump win will probably be good for crypto but um yeah so you think if Kamala wins, it's going to be really bad for crypto or just like a, a quick, you know, people are scared at first and then, you know, we go back. On yeah, to it, it's so hard to tell at this point. The yeah. Democrats have been historically awful for crypto, like Gary Gensler, the SEC is just like everyone listening knows how terrible they have historically been. And so it's not we, we just can't expect them to be better. We need them to show us that they're going to be better. And that, yeah. that, that takes time. So I think they, I think it will be bad to begin with. And then if they say, you know what, we're going to be sensible, reasonable, we're going to regulate, we're not going to overregulate, we're going to, you know, treat crypto like it should be treated in, in our minds. Great, then crypto will go up long term. But I think most people will expect the, the worst. And, and that's, that's my fear. Yeah, I understand that. I think for me, I agree. Trump wins. We probably have a God candle that day and <laughs> crypto does amazing. Yeah. If Kamala wins, I think it's a slower grind up. I think we still do well, mainly because I think we're in a global liquidity cycle where liquidity is mm. going to rise. And I think Bitcoin and crypto ultimately sort of falls that. So does tech. And I think that's what we're in. But I do think probably if Kamala wins, we take a short term hit. And then it's like it's not as crazy of a bull market as it would yeah. be if if I think Trump wins. Um, anyway, that's just sort of my guess. I don't know for sure, obviously, but I kind of see it as that. So let's get clear. September, we think probably a bad month, uh, which has already started out to be quite bad. Uh, and maybe it's not like the end of the world type of month, um, but it's just not great. Probably continues to chop, I would say. Yeah. October typically is really, really good. Now, the election is beginning of November, and so it's a weird month in every four years leading up to that. Do you think it's still going to be a bullish month, though? Ideally, I would assume if you think Trump is getting the odds higher, mm. then probably we have a really bullish month. Or do you think that that matters? 
leading up I to think, it. Um, I think we probably see more chop. Like, I know it's not what anyone wants to hear, but it's like, it's <laughs> the months. market is still uncertain in October. Yeah. Like, there's, we, we haven't really seen any, unlikely to have seen any significant catalyst indicating, oh, yeah, it, it's free and clear. We're going to go up. And so I think, I think until the election happens and we see, uh, like, we might trend upwards a little bit, but I, I don't think we see God candle after God candle. I don't think we like break 70, 80K, um, anything like that. I think we're probably in the, you know, 55 to 65K range um, okay. all the way up to the election is, is probably. Like that's if I had to bet on a 10k range, that's where I'd say we're at. I don't love it, but um, it's not the worst. Like, I, yeah, it's only two more months, guys. We've been battling for six <laughs> months. Uh, we just need yeah. two check marks. We need rate cut come in September, and probably just like they say, hey, we're going to continue to do this, which I think is pretty obvious at this point. Yeah, and then Trump win. If that happens, go bull market back on. Zeneca is freaking bullish. In that <laughs> moment, let's pretend that we get those two check marks because honestly, the odds right now. I actually looked um, before we started recording. The odds are actually getting much higher for Trump. I think he's 53 or 54 percent now. So it's oh, starting, to, starting to creep up, which is nice. Um, yeah. And so let's say we get the both green check marks in terms of markets here. Um, what are you doing with your portfolio? Have you made any changes to plan for this? Or are you still waiting? Like, let's wait the two months and then I'll make I'll deploy come, you know, November 7th or whenever. Um, or what's your sort of like allocation right now? I'm, um, I mean, for the last like nine months, I've been selling off most of my like riskier assets and just consolidating because my portfolio has been a mess for a long time. And I'm basically just trying to stack Bitcoin and ETH um, and Sol. And I think that that's still my plan going into, um, into the election. I'll very happily hold those three coins. I think that, um, they're the best coins to hold long term, medium term, short term, maybe, maybe not. And, and that's my plan. I think, potentially depending on how crazy it gets on election day, I might take some profits if we see like a ridiculous couple of God candles and things are absolutely crazy. Cause I think that, um, it'll, you know, yes, it's good news, but it'll take a time for, take some time for like policies to come into play and for things to play out, um, both in terms of rate cuts and, uh, Trump being, uh, right. elected and, and doing it. And by the way, good. listeners might be like taking profits, profits on what we've been down <laughs> only for six months, but this is the beauty of paying attention during bear markets in 2022 yes. and early 2023 and making sure to buy the right assets back then, because even though it's been a struggle of a year, if you bought in early enough, you've been doing all right and you can still take profits even today, which I think many people are like, eh, I don't know about profits right now. Um, let's say you were to move out of ETH, Soul, or Bitcoin. I don't know if you have been at all, but let's say you were to go a little bit more degen down the risk curve. Is there any, I don't know, sectors you're looking into? Is there any specific tokens that you're looking into? Like, what are you kind of eyeing up? Because I know you're always sort of eyeing other things, regardless of if you're actually buying it or not. I'm sure you're always keeping your eye on the market. What are you kind of looking at in terms of what narratives or sectors or tokens might outperform? I think AI is is uh, probably going to be one of the biggest narratives of the next big wave up in this bull cycle. Um, Tau, BitTensor is, is a token I've held for about a year now, and I think I'm, I'm pretty bullish on it. And um, the thing with AI, though, is it's so tied to NVIDIA and the whole AI sector yeah. outside of crypto that if that tanks, there's, it's going to struggle. But <laughs> I'm so bullish on AI that I think that they will probably do all right, um, medium, long term. And so I think the AI sector will do good. I think gaming is, you know, people have been talking about crypto and Web3 gaming for as long as I've been in the space. And it's never yeah. really come to bear. Like we don't have that many great, good, fun games yet. But, you know, it takes five, 10 years to, to create a good game. It's been five to seven years since people have been building games in the space now. And so I think over the next one, two years, we start to see actual genuinely fun games come to market that have mass widespread appeal and then have a crypto element to them. And so I'm keeping an eye on the gaming sector um, as well. One token I hold there is Prime, um, the token behind Parallel. And mm -hmm. they also have a uh, AI game coming out, Colony. So it's like it kind of hits both, check, checks both those Colony boxes. looks unreal we had so um, this founder on our podcast i can't remember his name right now but um what they're building is actually insane it's super I cool I, I have up on the screen here by the way as we're talking just the top performing crypto sectors over the last 30 days uh and uh, and deepen is actually mm. number one. Second, which is quite interesting i know you've talked about this a little bit is nft applications yeah uh, nfts coming back for another bull run i know you've called it a couple times that you think that they will have a run um, but I'm surprised to see them being the second highest performing sector in all of crypto at the moment. So that's wild. Yeah. And, I mean, and people always write off NFTs, ignore NFTs. Um, and, you know, you're right to do it for 99.999% of them, the, the junk scammy. But it's just like meme <laughs> coins. It's just like altcoins. There's a lot of junk out there, but there's some genuine use cases. And the technology, NFT technology, I, I will, you know, 
die on this hill. I think it's it's world revolutionary changing technology that will be everywhere at some point. Doesn't mean the tokens that exist now will go up in price or anything like that, but the tech is good. And as more people come around to see that and as it gets more integrated in people's lives and, and the world, I think there will be pockets within the NFT space that do very well financially as well. So too many people are sleeping on NFTs and that's fine by me because I can just continue to accumulate and, and, and consolidate into things that I want to hold long term. But um, yeah, they'll have that moment again. Yeah, I agree. Okay, let's. this one's actually going to play on your episode last week about the four-year cycles. And so everyone, I think, is expecting a four-year cycle. And I mean, I do too. It's my base case until I see something otherwise. Yeah. But I think 2025, 2020, maybe it's early 2026, uh, that it's like we top out um, and we go into another bear market. Now, you talked about how this can't happen for forever. At some point, yeah. we're going to stop having these four-year cycles, which I completely agree with. And what was interesting is... Um, if you look at internet companies from back in the day, they had these huge cycles in like the late 90s and obviously early 2000s. And then the dot-com crash happened. Everything tanked, went down like 95% and everyone thought it was all over with. And then it was just like this long, secular 20-year bull market almost, except yeah. for the 2008 financial crisis, which is a little blip in the chart, where just these things just went up and up and up. Yes, they still had kind of cycles, but they were very small. Nothing like these like 90% drops that they had back in the late 90s and in that that dot com boom. Um do you think we are at a point in crypto where that might be it now and maybe last cycle was our dot com bust and now it's like as we talked about we've got NFTs, you've got gaming, we've got Dpin, we've got DeFi, all these things where like in stable coins where we have sectors that like are legit. People use them, they're growing. They're not the fastest growing things in the world all of them, but they're they're there. They're creating revenue. There's profitable companies. Like it's, it's, if you're in the space, it's pretty obvious that like these things are going to work out. Not all of them, but like the sectors are there and they're going to be here. So like, could that be what we're in? And this is just going to be a slow grind up and it's not going to be this crazy for your cycle. Or do you think we're just not there yet? I think we're not there yet. I, I very much okay. get what you're saying. And I think we will get there, but I think <clears throat> the thing about the dot com crash and what happened afterwards is it wiped out the vast majority of companies and, uh, what remained and what sustained over the next few years and a couple of decades were legitimate businesses. And they weren't nearly the crazy valuations and, and scammy and all the kind of stuff that was happening then. If we look at crypto right now and we're honest with ourselves, the vast majority of things that exist are vaporware, scammy, no practical use, aren't solving real world problems, are like a billion dollar valuation for something that, you know, outside of crypto wouldn't even be worth uh, $5 million. Anyway. It's, it's insane valuations everywhere. And right. you, you can't ignore that. And so um, I, I do think we need like, I don't know if it's like a big washout and great reset and all of these things go to zero, or it's mm. just like, you know, a, a gradual dis decline in a lot of them and chop. And then eventually people just stop paying attention to those and we get legitimate things. Right. But we're not in that post.com crash yet. Uh, we need we just there's just too much garbage out there and maybe there'll always be a lot of garbage just the nature of crypto and the decentralization of it and the gamification of the world and all that kind of stuff but yeah it's just too much I, junk still i agree there's way too much junk probably like 98 percent is junk in this space two percent is good the one thing i think as you explain that it's like oh yeah that makes sense but then i just think tokens are a whole different beast than stocks right like mm -hmm. i don't know when i think of some of these like i don't know cardano for example in my opinion, probably should be closer to zero than whatever it is right now. Yeah. And, but then I think there's just all these tokens that are probably owned by Cardano that are just sitting in their staking contract and like, they'll just never go to zero because right. they're just sitting there. Right. So like maybe just the nature of tokens are very different than how stocks work. I'm not sure. Cause I, I always wonder why is there so many zombie companies in crypto that just aren't going to zero and are still yeah. worth billions. It just, it yeah. blows my mind. Um, and so maybe that's why, but I don't know. It, anyway, they're worth billions, but it's a lot of, it's like fake worth. It's like, if you actually yeah. went to sell a, a, a significant Good. amount, you'd never actually get that liquidity out. That's, there's, there's all these like hidden valuations in this space. And then, yeah. Which is why you got to be careful of where you allocate your capital. And why I think, as you said, Bitcoin eats soul, just keep it easy and try to get out a lot of the shit uh, and just get it into those and accumulate yeah. that. And like, you're probably good to go you know, yeah. uh, instead of trying to play around with all these other tiny little low cap tokens that may have real liquidity, may not like, it's so challenging to, to, to go down that risk curve. Um, Denica, let's leave it there. That was a fantastic episode. Really helpful to understand kind of where we're at. I hope that we're both wrong and September ends up being better <laughs> Me too. Than, than we think <laughs> it is. Uh, and we just rip all the way into the election and beyond. There's a chance it happens, but, uh, 
According to historical data, it doesn't look like it will, at least not in Bitcoin. Uh, but we'll see what happens. If you want to keep tabs on what's going on in the market, make sure you subscribe to this channel and listen to our episodes that come out daily for you at least five times a week. Seneca, thanks so much for joining us. Looking forward to having you on next week. And we will continue this journey we are on in the crypto world. Uh, but thanks again for joining. Thanks so much for having me. All right, guys, today's the day we've all been waiting for. It's time to announce the winners of our crypto giveaway. We had incredible response from all of you, and we're thrilled to see so many people excited about supercharging their crypto knowledge. And so without further ado, let's get to the winners. For the profit from the future crypto investing masterclass worth $499, the lucky winner is at Warner69. Congratulations. You're about to take your crypto investing skills to the next level. Next up, we have the Milk Road Pro one year subscription worth more than $250. And the winner is Maraconda. You'll be able to enjoy a whole year of exclusive pro content. We can't wait to see how it helps you on your crypto journey. Next up, we have one month free of the Milk Road Pro subscription. And the winner is Alexandra Raffin. So check that out. And finally, we have the Mystery Box, a surprise that could be anything. The winner of the Mystery Box is at Akmimon88. Huge congratulations to all our winners. All you have to do to get your prize is send us a DM on Twitter. That's at Milk Road Daily. Just DM us there. We'll see you on there and we will be able to give you your prize. Thanks again to everyone who participated. It was an amazing couple weeks and we're so glad you are now subscribed to our channels. Uh, if you didn't win, don't worry. We'll do more of these so you can win some other stuff in the future. Stay tuned, keep on learning and stick with us here at the Milk Road Show. As always, if you liked today's episode, please hit subscribe and make sure you follow us so you don't miss out on the next one. There's also a link in the description to our free five minute daily newsletter where we simplify crypto for you while making you laugh. And if you're willing to step up your crypto investing game, we're gonna also leave a link for Milk Road Pro. You get access to our portfolio where you can see exactly what we are buying. This is your number one resource to help you invest successfully in crypto. One final note, this show is for educational purposes only and nothing we say is financial advice. Investing in crypto or any asset is risky and you should never invest more than you can afford to lose. Thanks so much for listening in my friends. Have a wicked awesome day.